thank you all for joining us today. Um, my name's uh, Laura Hodgkiss and I'm the events and training team leader here at the Chamber mm -hmm. of Commerce. Um, I'm really pleased you could all join us today. Um, the attendees have just gone up to 75. Um, so it's amazing um, how many people have joined us today. So really, really thank you. I know this is new to the Chamber, so thank you very much. Um, today's host is going to be Claire Nicholl. Um, Claire's going to be talking to us today about how to re uh, work remotely from home and issues that employees have and empl um, employers have as well at home. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and I'll pass over to Claire. Hello everyone and thank you Laura. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, yes. Okay, without too much echo? No, nope, perfect. Okay. 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 Laura. Hello, everyone. Laura and I have been fun, had fun and games this morning, making sure this uh, works for everybody. So thank you to everybody for, for taking some time to listen to this. I uh, just want to say a big thank you to the Chamber. I'm a member of the Chamber and I know they've been working uh, their socks off um, over the last uh, week or so to keep businesses in Staffordshire. Uh, being as productive as possible and also learning how to do webinars so uh, I feel quite honoured I, I wasn't the first guinea pig there was uh, Dan did a, a webinar yesterday which I listened to which was really good but uh, big thanks to the, the team there and I think listening today will have a mixture of chamber members and non-chamber members. Um, I did listen to uh, Dan's uh, webinar yesterday which was about technology related to working from home really enjoyed that. I did actually, I'll, I'll let you into a little secret, I did actually sit in the garden listening to it um, on my laptop, which was really, really lovely just to sit and listen and enjoy the sunshine. So if you're feeling a bit uh, or feeling a bit fed up with what's going on in the world and you can get some sunshine, you want to lift your laptop outside and just uh, find a chair, feel free. I've got nothing whizzy happening on my presentation slides, just uh, some key points, um, but that would be my rec recommendation if at all possible. So what I'm gonna talk about today is homeworking, but I'm, I'm referring it to it as emergency homeworking because the situation that we're in at the moment, um, so many rules have been thrown out the window completely. And while a lot of the advice, and there's some great advice and lots of information and content out there about working from home, a lot of it is still valid, but this is very, very different home working. A lot of people are being forced into it, having to do it for health reasons, for business continuity reasons, for all kinds of reasons. We're all in the same boat here. So this is about working from home right now, during a pandemic, the situation that we're in. I'm um, sharing with you my experience of working from home for nearly 20 years now. I set up Workbest, which is a small uh, business. I wear a few different hats in what I do and how I earn my income. But I set this up about 18 months ago to encourage, advocate for, offer training in and around flexible working and all that brings remote working, home working, flying that flag. And now we're in a situation where suddenly everyone is working from home. So no one's really talking about flexible working anymore. We're all just doing the home working thing as best we can. And having as I have a lot of experience of working from home and I've done it for a long time, I've seen the good and the bad and the ugly, I wanted to share some of my thoughts to, to kind of help reassure people, I think, about what's going on, what might be going well, might, what might not be going well, share a few thoughts that I hope you can take away that will be helpful for you, your families, your teams, people around you. Um, just food for thought. There's. Um, I'm not an HR expert, I'm not any kind of government advisor, I'm not offering specific business advice, um, but I do know my stuff around home working and what works and the strategies that I've put in place over the years and the changes I'm noticing and taking on board the, the questions that people are having, the discussions that people are having right now and, and the kind of things that people want to know. So I'm hoping that I can reflect that in the presentation today. So I anticipate that I'll be talking for about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll be over for some questions. And as Laura has said, you can ask questions in the chat 
or there's a Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen. If you just hover over uh, your mouse over the bottom of the screen, those should come up and we'll get to those at the end because it will be uh, just a bit tricky to, to keep looking at that. But I'll, I'll, you know, do note any questions and we'll try and get to those at the end. So, um, so I'm mainly looking at the, the social and emotional aspects of working from home. And uh, as the conversations change a lot, uh, has changed so much, you know, the national conversation about what's happening in the UK over the last week or so, um, working from home is becoming more and more uh, talked about. So there's lots of tech conversations. That's what Dan covered yesterday. And I'm looking at the social and emotional aspects of that. So there's there's four key areas that I want to cover today. So I'm breaking the presentation up into four key areas. So I'm going to be looking at number one, anxiety and people who are feeling anxious about working from home. Uh, secondly, I'll be looking at routine and the things we can put in place to help us have a good routine. Number three will be around expectations, and that will be covering expectations on ourselves as well as others. And then the fourth is about trust and trusting others, trusting your team, trusting that things will get done. And I'll also touch on at the end uh, a bit about some of the other support that might be available and sources of information if you want to get uh, more information around the changes and as I say the conversation is changing constantly but I am noticing that there's more articles coming out now about working from home in the current situation. So moving on to my first slide, uh, so Laura's operating the slides for me here so I'm just having a little look at her screen, yes there we go, so this is anxiety, uh, so why people are nervous about working from home. I put this in because I noticed about a week ago um, on social media and conversations I was having with friends and colleagues, people were feeling very anxious, not just about the whole situation with the coronavirus and what's happening in the country and in our immediate neighbourhoods, but about working from home and, and what this would mean for people. Um, so why are people feeling nervous about this? And I thought it would be useful to look at this to understand a bit about people's perspectives and where people might be coming from. So firstly, I think there's a fear of, fear of this dystopia that we're in. The world is changing. The world is completely different to what we've known before. This has crept on, up on us uh, very quickly. It's changing our way of life. And people are quite genuinely scared of, not, of, of, of more than just working from home, but, ho but the, whole, the whole change system that is happening in our world. Um, so that, that's a big fear for people and working from home as a part of that is causing people some anxiety. The second thing is about, um, I've noticed there's, there's always been resistance to people working from home. That was why I set up work best and spend a lot of time doing the things that I've been doing up to uh, in, in, in life before coronavirus, as it were. So where it's been talked about, it's been, you know, on the on the agenda in various conversations about working from home, the benefits, blah, blah, blah. A lot of you probably know what the, these conversations are. And it's so often been resisted. Yes, there's been lots of people that have embraced it, but there has also been a lot of resistance. So people are nervous about this, being told to do something that they've recent, previously been not been asked to do or been told, no, we can't do that for whatever reason. I think the third thing causing anxiety is that people are now being asked to spend their whole life in one possibly quite small contained place. So we're having the same place for our home, for our family, for our work, for our social life, for everything. It's all just in one place and that, that is big for, for everybody and trying to be productive with work, yeah, that, that's a new experience which will be causing people anxiety. Uh, the next point is about caring responsibilities. Now, this is about caring responsibilities at home, uh, which is a big factor. And I'm going to spend a bit of time later on talking about 
working at home with kids around and some strategies to, to deal with that, or at least just understand how that might work. Uh, but people will also be anxious about other carers and responsibilities they have that they might not be able to do in the same way that they've done before, whether it's an elderly relative, or you know, if they've got special needs children, you know, if they've got people in, in other kinds of uh, accommodation, those factors, um, those are kind of high level motivation factors for people. Those kind of responsibilities need to be okay for people to be okay working. So I think that is, is a big factor for people. The next uh, anxiety, I think, is about not having the workspace at home. Uh, everyone's home is different. Um, some people just haven't got the space to create um, somewhere to work. I I'm seeing more and more people thinking differently around this and finding that space. But very few people, unless they're used to working from home, might not have a dedicated space. So that is causing anxiety. How are they going to do this? You know, if they've only got a kitchen, lounge, couple of bedrooms or whatever that's causing the anxiety and will be causing worry uh, and the next point is around workplace as a sanctuary and I think I know I've certainly experienced people who've resisted working from home because uh, home is somewhere that they want to get away from uh, it's somewhere to escape from and there could be various reasons for this uh, the worst kind of case scenario might be if someone is um, experiencing domestic abuse at home or another reason why a home is somewhere that they would want to escape from and we won't necessarily know um, those those situations that people are in I don't have any you know particular experience of that but I think it's a factor that needs to be borne in mind that some people may not have considered as to why there should could be resistance to working from home so I just offer those points out there for people to think about the different perspectives and why people might be, be nervous. But I then want, with those in mind, I want to move on to the next slide is what an employer can do about this anxiety. And it is that most people uh, will be, if they're working from home, I recognize that people might be in different situations. Some will be self-employed. Some will be contractors, some will have an employer, but most people now, um, I've no exact figures, but chances are they'll have an employer that's asking them to work from home. So I would encourage uh, organisations to think about how they can manage this work from home anxiety that people may be experiencing. And some of this will work for people who are embracing it as well, because what it's important to remember is that we don't know how long we'll be doing this and that's been very clear in the news that's come out hopefully it might just be a few weeks it may be a few months it may be a bit longer but this is a marathon and not a sprint and people will will need time to adjust and there'll be changes in mood and mindset as this moves on so it's important to consider the different perspectives that people have regarding their situation and how they can be productive in their home environment. So I've already covered some of that anxiety, but everyone's uh, perspectives will be different. Please encourage your employees, your staff, your team, your colleagues to talk openly about their concerns without retribution. They need to be honest because that's the only way that you're going to, to get to solutions. It could be that they just need to voice those to get them out, to share them, but they may well be genuinely concerned about how they're going to get anything done in their particular home environment. And if people are being asked to achieve a certain level of work based on what they can achieve in the office, I think that's unrealistic. It's not to say it won't ever happen over the next few weeks and months, but We've got to take these things a bit slowly and give people time to settle in. So try and open up those discussions and when you're asking people what they think, listen. And I mean really, really listen. Hear their concerns. Try to let them speak out. Practice active listening skills rather than interrupting people and trying to get to a solution too quickly because this really is quite a sensitive subject to people depending on on their concerns um, 
So do do listen and take on board. And there may not be a solution straight away, but it's okay to take a bit of time and just think about how we can support people. It's easy to panic at the moment. I think the nation might be coming to a, a slightly calmer period, but panic can still happen. So take time to make those decisions. Work with your teams to, to find solutions. There really is no right or wrong answers. Uh, we've not been in this situation before, and sometimes you may just need to throw the rule book out the window, but work together to find solutions. So for example, if someone hasn't got uh, a desk space at home, could you talk with them and encourage them to talk with their family about how they might be able to create a space for people to work? I know of some people, I know that in one Facebook group that I'm in, that a lady with quite a young family, her and her husband are now going to be working from home. They have two quite young children, so to create uh, another office space, they put both of their children into one bedroom and then put a desk in one of the children's bedrooms. May not work for everyone, I'm not saying everybody's got to do that, I'm just offering ways to think a bit outside the box to take these temporary measures. Certainly here at my house, while we've got a dedicated office for me, my husband's probably going to be working from home soon and there was no space for him. The dining room table could be an option, but it's a really high traffic area and he needs to be on a, a lot of conference calls. So we've moved some furniture around, we've got rid of some furniture and put a, a, an old desk that we had in the garage upstairs for him. We've even actually I put on Facebook that uh, we were still short of a chair because I put a picture of it and within an hour one of our neighbours offered us a deck chair, uh, not a deck chair, a desk chair even. So uh, there are solutions, perhaps even borrowing things from the office as long as it's done safely, um, just find those solutions. I also encourage employers to remember that they do have a duty of care to their staff and to look after them during this situation so that works both ways uh, we're all in this as a team is my belief um, but it's important to make sure that people are being looked after and, and have what they need as far as is reasonably possible um, and given the current circumstances and also I think I've noticed people expressing concern about how they're going to be monitored during this time and already our homes are feeling much more prison like you know they're feeling different because we can't we've just not got that same freedom that we have before so I'm, I've always been anti kind of checking up and you know clocking in and logging on at certain times in terms of advocating for home working so I think it's important to, to think checking in with your staff not just checking up by all means phone calls are great video calls are great but they really should be seen as a way of you know, looking after staff, checking that they're okay, not, not checking up that they're, that they're working because you might not get that productivity that you've expected before straight away. Okay, so that's anxiety. Those are my thoughts around that area. I'd like to move on now um, to the next slide, which is about routine, the, the second area that I want to, to spend a little bit of time on. And all of the uh, working from home advice that you may have seen in the past very much advocates for having uh, a good routine. And I'd certainly advocate for this as well. What I think it's important to bear in mind here though with the situation that we're facing is that you may not get a perfect routine straight away, but a routine will evolve. This week has been completely upside down for me and I'm used to working from home. My boys are used to me working from home, but I've had calls that unexpectedly where people are asking for help. There's, there's quite a small community in our village. I'm part of a few different networks and just I decided to take the priority to prioritize that if people needed some immediate help that I would respond to that as best as I could. So that's what I've done. So my routine's gone a bit out of the window. I've been very conscious that my boys are at home and I've wanted them to be happy, you know, all that they've, uh, you know, this is a big change for them. So I've spent a bit more time with them than I would normally have done on working. 
they understand that. So I can see there's going to be some patterns in our day. It's going to be a bit different, but it will evolve. These transitions, they do take time and you will see patterns emerging yourself as you find things start to work and bed in. So while it's good to have kind of a, a rough schedule, what you're doing when, uh, don't be too harsh on yourself and think you've done it all wrong if you don't get that schedule right straight away if the routine goes out the window on the first day uh, many of you might have seen various uh, school routines uh, school homeschooling kind of routines floating around facebook um, i would just go with the pace and the flow of your house and perhaps it may even take two to three weeks to get into a, a pattern and even that might change Sort out your caring responsibilities. I will cover this a bit more later, particularly with kids around in the house, but I know certainly if I'm worried about childcare or how my kids are, then that's what I'm thinking about. I'm not thinking about work. So it's important to take some time to think about how you're going to manage those. Uh, in the current situation, it might now be elderly relatives, um, how they're coping. I know I've been helping my elderly neighbor, speaking with his son to provide support to the neighbor. So I know that if those kind of things that are really kind of central to, to who we are and how we see ourselves, if those need sorting, then uh, that's going to take our mind off our work. So do take a bit of time to sort those out. Work when you feel most productive. Again, this routine will evolve. Um, some people are morning people, some people are more night owls. And as you see what needs to be done in your day in this in this kind of new way of working, this temporary way of working, you'll know what suits you best. So go, go with that. Really don't expect a usual nine to five routine. I do try and stick with that in my usual working from home. I do try and stick to fairly nine to five because I find I can be more productive when I know the boys are out of the house at school. So I would say, you know, just do what works for you. It might be different times, it might be chunks of times, you might work late into the evening if that suits you. I know my husband's more of a, a night owl than I am. I'm just going to give Laura a little nudge to uh, put the next bullet up and the one after that, please. Too. Thank you, Laura. Uh, be flexible with your timings as well. By all means, try things, see how they go, see what works. It's good to have those boundaries as well, but don't be too harsh on yourself if things don't work straight away. Uh, but experiment, see how it goes. It's more about the, the outcomes, I think, at the moment than, than putting the hours in because you are in a different environment. Set boundaries in your household as appropriate as well. Uh, if you do need some quiet time and you need to not be interrupted, people, your other people in your household may not be used to you, you know, saying, look, don't interrupt me at this time. Um, but it's important to, to talk that through, explain to them what's happening, why you need that space. I know for this call right now, I shut the door into this room and I've given my boys strict instructions not to disturb me for an hour. And I have my fingers crossed that that will happen. But if their faces should appear, then, um, then I'll deal with that later and politely shoo them away. But I do think it's becoming a lot more acceptable for kids to be around on these, these video calls, which I think is, is a good thing, actually. They're part of our families and they're there. And then finally, uh, for a routine, just know what your priorities are. They're shifting all the time at the moment. For me personally, right now, it's knowing that my boys are okay, that they're happy, that they've got something to do, that they're occupied. Um, and I'll be monitoring that situation, I think, as we all are. Um, but for you as well, you might have different priorities for certain days. You might have a, a piece of work that does really need to get done on a particular day, and you just need to make sure that gets done. Forget the washing up, forget hanging any washing out, forget, you know, having a clean, forget um, whatever, forget brushing your hair. Just make sure that the thing that really needs to get done, whatever that is, does get done. Okay, so that's routine, offering a few ideas there, but I do stress that flexibility. I'm just going to grab a sip of water. Okay, so now moving on to the third point, which is around expectations, especially at the moment. Now I'm looking here firstly on expectations of ourselves 
and others. So the people that we're working with, our teams, our staff, our managers, what can we expect from them? Technology, uh, we had a great presentation yesterday from Dan talking about all the different technology that is out there and there's lots of stuff to support people uh, working from home. What I do recall that he stressed was that uh, the internet is okay, there's enough for everyone. I'm probably not putting this in his technical terms, but we shouldn't run out of internet, essentially. I think there will be various websites that crash every now and again if, if they get high profile coverage, but generally we're okay for internet. Phew. Um, but there's lots of stuff out there. Many of you will be getting to grips with new technology. Just be patient with yourselves. Everyone's doing a great job, especially Laura. She's doing a great job. I know this is completely out of her comfort zone and, and other people at the chamber. And there's so many organizations in the same situation. So it will take time to get to know it, to get the most out of it. It won't be perfect straight away, but I think there's generally a lot more patience. And if you just don't expect too much of yourself, you'll, you'll get it and everybody will get there. Uh, new kit versus old school kit. Uh, please, please remember that the telephone and email are really simple to use. Most people have access and there's lots you can do with it. Um, I've worked from home for so long. Just don't know if I should admit this or not. But um, so when I was first working from home, all we had really was email and phones and probably not even a server. I think when we started using a server and everyone could have these documents that everyone else could see at the same time. It was quite magical at the time, but before that it was just, someone worked on the document, then they saved it, and then they emailed it to someone else, and then they worked on it, and they saved it, and then they sent it back again. And some people still work like that, and that's great. And if that's what you need to do in your company to, to, to get through over the next few weeks, that's okay. You don't necessarily need lots of fancy kit, especially if there's a, a big, queue and a waiting list. Make the most of the telephone. So many people forget the telephone. It's a great tool. Um, pick it up. People love to have a conversation. I've had more conversations in the last week or so on the telephone than I've had probably in the last six months. And it's a great way to connect with people. And it's perfectly okay to use those very simple old school to tools. Uh, just keep calm with it all. Um, people are finding that tech can be a bit clunky. I know one of my good friends who I've had a chat with, she's kind of working on a, uh, uh, through her desktop on a website, so it's taking longer, it's a bit more clunky. So everything is just, just a bit slower, but that's their solution, that's what they're doing at the moment. And while it can be frustrating, that's just how it is. So, so keep calm and, and just find a way around it, use your, use your tech teams, um, work with colleagues, you will get there. Everyone needs to adapt and find a, uh, find a way to adapt and that pace will vary. Some people will switch onto this very, very quickly. Other people, it will take longer. I know uh, I don't consider myself a particularly techie person. Other people are brilliant at it, but if we're all a bit patient and um, just, uh, considerate of each other, then I think we will get there. I'm sure more people have had to adapt to video conferencing and Zoom over the last week or so than, than ever before. Expectations as well, just moving on to motivation. Your, I can tell you now, your motivation will vary from day to day. Sometimes you'll be really motivated to do stuff, other times you'll think, what's the, what's the point? Why am I doing this work? And that is really uh, an absolute, work from home fundamental if you're not feeling motivated one day you just can't get into stuff my solution for that is to stop have a break have a cup of tea think about is there something else going on um it's very very typical of home working uh, just because you haven't got the same people around you to sort of keep you going when uh, things are feeling tough and, and there's, it's going to be a tough couple of months there's no doubt about that but I just want to reassure you that that's okay. It's very, very typical. And there will be other days where you think, oh gosh, I'm going to do this forever. But, you know, just, just go with that. I know it's okay. I think this time is going to require us to be a lot more, you know, self-aware, be in touch with, you know, our emotions, all that pink fluffy stuff. Um, but I think that will, will help us be more patient uh, to the people around us and to ourselves as well. 
priorities as well just be realistic about what you are giving yourself to do each day I know certainly I've given myself a few tasks to do every day this week and perhaps only achieved one or two of them just because there's been so many interruptions or things haven't gone quite to plan uh, but it's knowing what's important and if the important things happen and what you really need to get done then I think that's winning for me and the final thing on, on this particular side is about just practicing patience uh, that applies to all of the above people will feel frustrated this is a completely different way of life that we're being asked to to lead for for very good reasons at the moment and it's so important to be patient with others and with ourselves as well so just recognize when that's happening and and um, take a bit of time out when you can so moving on to the second slide around expectations is about kids and the caring responsibilities. I know this has been a huge concern for many, many people is, uh, and I've heard it so many times, how on earth am I gonna get stuff done with the kids around? Um, being at home with kids is, and working is not easy and not how working from home, good working from home is meant to function. But we're all in this together and I'm finding that people are being hopefully a lot more acceptable. Uh, the article that I wrote um, around working from home with the kids, and I'll share a link to that later, but it's, I wrote it to help people understand what they could achieve when the kids are around by different age groups and I'll go into that shortly but I've also had an amazing amount of feedback from people who haven't got kids who are now being asked to work from home saying that it's really helped them understand the, the challenges that people with kids will be facing so I'm hoping that it will at least give employees some insight into that. I know some employers will still be perhaps expecting people to to, to trot out the usual uh, stuff that they do nine to five. I personally think that's very unrealistic, but I think and hope that those mindsets are changing. So um, I think I offer as, as, as an overview of all of this is if you are feeling very frustrated about working from home with your kids around thinking, oh my goodness, how am I gonna do this? Is just to try some positive reframing of this. Um, with people that well personally i feel quite lucky that i'm not on the nhs front line i can be at home with my kids i know that i'm relatively safe they're safe and that while we're stuck here we are safe and i think doctors and nurses up and down the country might swap with us or me in an instant if they could i know i wouldn't want to be in their position so when my boys are annoying me, which I have, they have done already a couple of times this week, I just try and bring that to mind. And if there's ways that you can uh, reframe whatever situation you're in to help you through this, then I would encourage you to do that. Again, no right or wrong way, but I just throw that in there to, to help us think about it a little bit differently. So in terms of kids' ages, uh, kids are all different, they all have their own challenges, but I split this into ages, so looking at the not five-year-olds, how are you going to work at home with, with those kids around in that age group? I put in here, you've got to be kidding me, because I think that's what most people will be saying if they've got kids that age, and they're going to be trying to work from home, because at those ages, they do need a lot, they want a lot, so they don't really know uh, the boundaries that we set. So really think outside the box as to how you can do this and don't wear yourself out. I know trying to work and look after the kids at the same time, it will be exhausting and that's just not sustainable for this marathon that we're in. Try and work with others, think about your routine, think about their routine, speak to your employer, think about what you can achieve and looking after yourself as well. You know your kids. Um, have a look at my article for a little bit more on this, but this is a hard one and, and I just encourage you not to expect too much of yourself. The five to nine year olds, well, you might get a bit done. Uh, they might be obliging if you ask nicely, I say. So uh, they can sit in front of a DVD for a little bit longer. Screen time's gonna be okay over the next couple of months. Um, I find that if you've given them some of your time, then they're more likely to let you get on with, with what they want to do. So they can understand a little bit more. And then for the 10 to 15 year olds, well, this is open to negotiation really. They're a lot more independent, they can understand a lot more, but they still have their, their needs. I certainly find with my two, as long as 
they're okay, then they'll let me get on. But boy, if they need something, if they're hungry or the batteries have run out on the Xbox or something, the internet just isn't working, then I'm not going to get anything done until we've resolved that. By all means, have a, a plan for your day, some kind of schedule, something that the kids are aware of. Uh, my two at the moment, they're not too worried. They're both still in their pyjamas, but um, that's okay. I had a lot to do today and this is important to me. So um, I'm just letting them do that. Um, have a plan for the day, but remember it is a plan. It's not a prescription. So if things don't get done, don't worry too much. So finally, on to the fourth area. Uh, this is about trust. Building trust uh, with your teams uh, and with others. And this is one of the reasons why so many people have resisted home working for such a long time, certainly a lot of employers. It's about that trust. How do I know that people are working if I can't see them? Well, as I heard someone say this morning, believe me, someone might not be working if even if they're sitting at the desk right in front of you, which I thought was a quite a good way of looking at it. Some of this trust has just got to be given at the moment, but there's ways to earn it and build it. I think important at the moment, especially in the current time with all the, the strain on the economy, all that's going on with the finance issues, um, job security, if you can reassure people that their income is safe, that they'll, they'll get paid at the end of the month, then that will go a long way to building that trust. If that's not possible, then those honest conversations have, have just got to be had. And I know that's something I can't advise on, but I know the Chamber is doing a lot of work on that. So if you need help on that, I'd encourage you to reach out to the team there and other information and support services. Do set priorities, expectations and boundaries. Think about these. I've covered this already in various contexts throughout this presentation, but think as teams. And if your manager's giving out, giving out tasks to people, uh, think about what's really important right now. We're kind of in urgent mode at the moment in terms of time management. Um, think about what, what does need to be done and what you can realistically expect of people and what they can expect of you as well. Um, particularly if people do start getting ill as we expect or self-isolation measures have to take have to become much more extreme respect people's values their time and their commitments people are going to be at home now you're at home uh, other people are at home so just be mindful of things that may be going on for them particular routines that they've set up or you know things that are going on my husband has um made a point of if he's phoning people uh you know it's about asking and finding it's okay to ask is this a good time to talk and if it's not say you know if you've got little ones if you're changing a nappy or if you're just having a game to settle them down you know be, be respectful of that and be respectful of the routines people have some people might say you know yeah just phone anytime 24 hours other people might say well let's just stick it to between 10 and 2. find what works stick to that respect it Look out for patterns in your own work and other people's and their routines. You'll see those evolving and work with those and constantly review what you're doing. Um, as we all know, the situation's changing daily. Reviews uh, are needed. We need to be able to talk about those and make changes if things aren't working. And it doesn't matter if it's not set up perfectly, there's time to change things. Also being available. I personally think it's, it's good to be flexible and be as available as possible. I need flexibility in my life, so I offer that flexibility to the clients that I work with um, and, and that works for me. Uh, but I do appreciate it if people say to me, you know, is this a good time to talk? And if, you, if it's not, say it and promise to call them back in half an hour or over it's good. That is acceptable. And another thing for building trust is about dealing with issues quickly. You're still in teams, you're still relying on each other. Issues will come up, especially at the moment. But don't ignore those. Deal with them quickly. Um, if people see that you're on it, that you're dealing with an issue and that you're trying to resolve it, whatever that might be, and it could be anything at the current time, then that will help build that trust. And I think if, if those kind of actions are taken and those kind of... Uh, ethics those kind of uh, patterns are respected then that will go a long way to people trusting each other and their colleagues more in this this new way of working so that's the the key areas that i've covered there so we've got anxiety routine expectations and trust 
Um, and just to have a look at the last slide before we go to, and see if there was any questions or any comments. Uh, I think this will be, a, be available to people afterwards, conscious there's links, but if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, my name is Claire Nicholl and I've written a few, uh, two or three articles recently about the current situation, so do have a look at those there in particular there's a link there about the, the working from home with kids during the pandemic where I go into the, the different age groups um, in a bit more detail. I've also recently set up a Facebook group called working from home during pandemic which if you want to join that you're very welcome to. I've got about 100 members so far we're just sharing ideas, sharing knowledge, sharing tips, um, having a bit of fun as well just sharing all that this situation brings us, uh, many of us have worked from home before, some people are completely new and are all in different situations. And then there's just a couple of articles there that I found useful recently that have been written with the current situation in mind and I think they're pretty good because I can read some articles and think, mm, yeah, that's just pretty bog standard, but those are quite good ones. So that's it from me and I just wonder, what Laura wants to do now or whether there might be any questions. Hi Claire, um, so thank you everybody uh, for listening to Claire today. Has anybody got any questions? And Claire, are you able to access the Q&A via your screen? Um, just because obviously I'll take the support links off if I access it via mine. So has anybody got any questions um, that they want to ask Claire at all? Well, I can't see any questions there in the Q&A. Um, there's the chat box at the bottom. That's fine, as long as um, people can, should they wish to. I'm guessing nobody's got any questions. Can we just give it a minute in case people are... Oh, hold on. Ah, found some questions. Well, thanks for the session. Okay, so um, Mary said thanks for the session. Um, Claire has said, what would be a good daily schedule? Uh, Sarah Williams is saying hi. Oh, no advice for things like headsets, what insurance? We've got. Okay, let's just have a look at the. Can you see those, Laura? I can see those questions, yes. Okay. So I'll have a look at the. Uh, I'll just have a chat through these. So Claire is asking, another Claire, uh, what would be a good daily schedule? I think it's important to have, to keep up waking up at roughly the time that you usually get up as a family um, and again have a good set your time for when you're going to eat uh, when you're going to have your breakfast your lunch and your dinner for me with my boys um, you know they sort of pre-teens and one's a teen and they like to lie in um, so I could tend to get up and they get up when they want to get up this is what we do in a typical half term and what we're doing at the moment uh, then we have lunch at a set time, otherwise I'm doing three different lunches because they'd want to eat at different times, and then dinner at a set time. And it's probably what I try and get, I'm a more of a morning person, so I schedule my sort of chunky really things that I need to get my head into in the morning, and then do some sort of easier tasks in the afternoon. Uh, I have a dog, so I'm out with my dog in the morning. Uh, at the moment exercise is changing um, so mine is really quite loose at the moment um, I'm not sure I hope that's helpful Claire it's really it's really up to you but I think worth writing that down and I actually met someone the other day who'd got their children to come up with their own schedule I think if children do that themselves if you've got children then they're more likely to stick to it um, so I hope that's helpful advice for things like headsets Mary uh, is asking this. Um, I don't have a headset, um, but it depends on what you need them for um, and how easily you might buy them at the moment uh, with us not being able to go out and buy essential kit. But I know a lot of people that I communicate to uh, with on video just use the simple headsets that come with a phone, um, like a, a mobile phone um it might be worth if that perhaps helps you you know block out some of the, the sound around you depending on your household um just see what you've got we might be in a situation where we just have to go with with what we've got at the moment um i'm not sure if that's the 
kind of advice that you're looking for, Mary, but that's kind of my take on it. Terry is asking about insurance for people from working from home. Yes, this is something that your employer would need to look at. I know it's affected by public liability insurance. Law, I wonder if anyone from the chamber might be on or whether that's something we could follow up with afterwards, Laura, but I know... Yes, absolutely, absolutely, Claire. Um, so, Terry, um, if you want to speak to me afterwards, and I'll, um, if you just pop your email in the chat section, and I'll be able to get some of that information um, over to you um, from one of our uh, colleagues. Yeah, I think under the current circumstances, so many of the usual things that... The usual processes, you know, are really being rushed through or there's more lenience on them, like, you know, certainly with car MOTs and servicing and stuff like that. People are give, being given more leeway, but it's worth having these things on your to-do list to, to get through too. Okay, so Sarah, so Williams is asking, have you any tips about managing teams remotely? I get about routine and look at not looking over everyone's shoulder. There is a concern terms that people work too much or at odd times. I could help manage this. I would suggest keep talking to your teams. Um, everyone's going to be different. Um, it is important to schedule those breaks. Try and have those face-to-face -face discussions with people. I know a lot of you know Zoom is really easy to set up. You can get a free Zoom account. I think if you can see someone face to face you'll get a better idea of, of how they're, they're feeling um, and what they're doing and their outputs. If you're not used to managing people remotely, how you, you need to make sure you've got a, a, a way in place of how you'll assess those outputs. And I'm not talking about formal procedure, but you know, law is organizing the events, the events, you know, the online events are happening. So are people producing work in the way you're expecting them? To produce that work um, and you will start to be able to to see those patterns evolving and I think it's just checking in with people and putting some responsibility on your teams as well to be looking after themselves um, and just keep talking as much as you can and just checking in on people you know the situations uh, changing daily and I think you know if people are working at odd times I think that's okay if it works for them and if it works for the business. Um, I wouldn't suggest perhaps calling clients at you know 11 o'clock in the evening, but I think if it's reasonable and it works, mm -hmm. then that's okay. But leave it, you know, do review it, do check in with people and review and check it's working for the business and for the people. Uh, Sonia is asking, uh, oh, uh, uh, thanks for the session. What's the best way to remain focused? I think uh, knowing what you've got to achieve, uh, knowing what you know, what output you want, and it might be that um, you break your, you might have a bigger sort of end goal kind of output, but breaking that down into smaller chunks. So I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, it could be, you know, organising. Um, oh, an article, uh, an example has not come to mind. But, you know, breaking your task down into small chunks and realistic chunks, you know, that work can be done in an hour and reviewing at the end of the day what you've actually achieved. So because sometimes you can think, oh, gosh, I haven't achieved anything when actually, in fact, you've achieved quite a lot. And I think having having those regular breaks and just trying to refresh as best you can, whether it's, you know, a cup of tea or a short walk or chat with colleagues. And if you find you are lo you losing focus, then that's when you really do need to, to, to take a break and just kind of check in with yourself or other members of your team. Okay, then on to Hilary. Uh, what about using laptop whilst working from home? How is this covered on insurance? Um, depends on whose laptop it is. I know my laptop I own myself, so that's covered by my household insurance. Work laptops would, if they're owned by your employer, then they would need to be covered on your employer's insurance and they would probably have to specify in the insurance that they are being used for home working purposes. But I would check that with the individual insurance provider. Laura, do you think the Chamber might have any more information on that? Yeah, so um, just to interject there just slightly, what I have noticed is there is quite a lot of questions about whether the slides, etc., will be available afterwards. 
Um, and there will be so and there will be a email address that you can contact us afterwards as well and um, so if any of you have um, questions about insurance obviously that Claire can't answer today we are more than happy to pick that up as the chamber and um, so just wait for the for the email I am taking if you want to put your email into the chat I'm more than happy to do that and um, but in terms of insurance we can definitely look at that from the chamber's point of view okay uh, Sarah's asking about um, questions are just jumping uh, any tips about working from home uh, and being on your own, how to deal with those concerns? Yes, this is something that's kind of um, come onto my radar in the last few days. Um, I, li I live and work in quite a busy household. My husband is away, he commutes, he works in Cambridge in the week. So, so I've still got the boys around me, I've still got my dog. I think if you're on your own, uh, you're on your own and um, you know, you live on your own, and you're working from home. I think there is uh, some responsibility on the individual to keep those connections and to keep checking in with those people who might be on their own. Some people might be quite happy. Sometimes at the moment, I think I quite like a little bit of peace. Um, so I'm a little bit envious, but I can completely get that, you know, it is going to feel quite lonely for people who don't necessarily want to be on their own. And there's lots of things coming up that people can check into um, on Facebook, various groups, activities. I did put this question out to my Facebook group last night, so some of them are coming back with some ideas around connection and just keeping up with friends, with family, using the telephone, using those simple tools again, um, and, and building up those routines in that way. And as, as an employer, just checking in with those people and, and asking them questions and creating an environment where they can respond quite honestly about that. Hope that helps, Sarah. Uh, anonymous person here. Oh, is it gone? Uh, some people are very concerned about being furloughed. As an employer, we do need to tell employees before making a claim. This might help the mindset of the employee and not just being underhanded. Yes, this is a tricky one. Um, I hadn't come across the term, term furloughed until the Chancellor used it in his speech the other day. And I'm sure this is something that the Chamber can probably advise more on. Um, I was made redundant about two years ago and it's not a fun process. And um, I think furloughed, if I'm right, it's people kind of being put oh the job's almost being put on hold and I think there's you know there's payment within that so I, I have to admit I'm not an expert on this um, I personally think it's always important to to share information as um, honestly as possible but I'm aware of the sensitivities around that and I think it's important to be quite human and recognize that people you know there's lots going on for people right now um, but I think that again that's something that the chamber I'm sure is doing a lot of work on to protect people who are in that situation um, but as I mentioned earlier I think if those people have got those concerns they're really if they think they might be laid off or it's going to affect their finances they're really not going to feel the same kind of motivation working at home um, if there's that uncertainty and how that's going to pan out so no no, um, I'm sorry that's kind of a bit of a woolly answer, but I think that's something that uh, to, to seek some more information from, probably from the Chamber. Yes, Laura, yeah. Again, um, from the Chamber's point of view, there are designated um, um, links that you can go to that sort of give you a lot more advice. Um, but as the Chamber, we can obviously direct you to the appropriate um, government websites um, that you can learn about furloughed. Uh, obviously, it's uh, quite a new term for most people, but you can access that by the government website. But the Chamber is more than happy to signpost anybody that needs to do that um, at that point. Okay. I, I hope that helps the, pers the person who asked that question. Andy Pierce is asking, would you say there is a problem in asking an employee to have their home laptop PC connected to a work profile? We're doing this for, for speed for one employee who cannot easily work from home, but I guess that as this goes on, we may need to purchase a laptop, yet the person in question would rather work in our office on her own. All other staff are now working from home. Okay, so I'm thinking that means uh, to have their home laptop. 
So it was kind of logging in remote. Oh, I see. So they're using their home laptop to then access their, their work kind of desktop from home. Um, this is a, yeah, this is a tricky one. I think, I know that in my husband's office, uh, a number of those staff have been able to go work from home, but there are still one or two people who are coming in to work in the office, but because they're socially distanced, then that's okay because they're sort of working on their own in an office. So from my own personal point of view is if, if that works, then I would say that's probably okay if it's respecting and adhering to all the government advice that is out there. This may be, you know, just be sensitive to why that person might be wanting to go into the office because of the other things that I touched on early, you know, sometimes work is a sanctuary. Uh, you just don't know those circumstances, but it might be that, you know, just further discussion will help you as an employer uh, or manager and help that person as well. So I, I hope that's helpful there. Uh, will you be running this webinar again? As I would like the other members of my peer group to listen and take part from Stuart there. Um, I know it's, it's recorded, so it can be shared. Um, so I'll leave that with, with Laura. I think they'll be finding ways to, to share that afterwards. Yes, Laura? That's right, yes. Um, so um, everybody will receive a copy of um, today's webinar. Okay. Uh, Mary said, I think Mary, maybe have a brew once you've achieved a task. Yep, those little wins, you know, I often reward myself. I kind of think if I've got a task to do, I'll get to this stage in the task and then I'll go and have a cup of tea or a few minutes in the garden sitting in the sunshine. Yeah, it was good. Those, those little rewards are really, really important, Mary. Um, just some, a few other uh, comments, same feedback on the session. Yeah, we're recording this. We've recorded it and we've got the slides to share with people. Uh, Robin saying, thank you for the positive approach. This subject, which should help us all sustain our business in a very chaotic market. Thanks also to Sarah Williams from the Staffordshire Chambers Trade for of Commerce for the recommendation for the webinar. Really pleased you've enjoyed it. Robin, this is a new situation for me and no one's really lived through this, so I'm just uh, sharing as much as I can. Um, someone said I missed the meeting yesterday, so that would be Dan's webinar. So I guess that will be available, the recording soon, Laura. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we uh, just because obviously it was a, a new, it was the first one yesterday. Um, so you should receive um, yesterday's today and then today's tomorrow. <laughs> so that's great. And I think uh, and someone else asked about that. Wendy asked about that as well. So um, I think that's all the questions covered. A lot of questions there, but um, thank you for the feedback, everyone. I really hope it was useful connect with me on linkedin if you would like to um i do live in staffordshire i'm in maidley and um enjoying the sunshine here but happy to respond to people and have uh, conversations i'm kind of hoping that i can support people through this as a bit of my contribution over the next few months um just to, to help people to help businesses uh, to help people in the area who might need it because it's a tricky time, but we've, we're all in it together, as we keep saying. Over, over to you, I think, Laura. Brilliant, fantastic. Um, for those of you, just to reiterate again, um, we will be sending out uh, Claire's slides today. We will also be sending out the video of the webinar that's taking place today and yesterday as well. Um, we should be hosting a load more webinars um, as of next week as well for the Chamber's point of view. Um, so look out for those on our um, on our website and also um, some e-shots that we'll be sending out uh, via the emails. So please do um, connect to us via the email. I just want to say a massive thanks to Claire. She's been amazing today and you did really, really well. Um, so really really pleased um, and uh, I look forward to having you all on some of our webinars very very shortly and I'll speak to you guys all very soon bye bye now bye everyone bye